How will Jupiter and Capricorn speak to you and your sign? Find out at NadiaShaw.com. Hello, fabulous friends, fans, and superstars. Welcome to your horoscope for the week of December 22nd, 2019. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. What an amazing week it is. We have an active and fabulous sky playing out for us right now. And of course, the very big news this week, what everybody's talking about, comes down to the solar eclipse right around thursday give or take a day on either side depending on where you are on the planet we will have a solar eclipse and we will enter eclipse season and we will walk into a new decade next week while still being in eclipse season now eclipse season is thought to be the period between two eclipses where the ancients said that the veil between the worlds was especially thin and it is during this time that we're able to recognize the spiritual lessons playing out in our lives it's very easy to get caught up in the illusion of our lives and what i mean by that is get caught up in the physical mundane experiences and we think of the mundane and physical as reality itself but ultimately it is these experiences that speak more to what is happening on spiritual levels that provide a springboard, if you will, to learn deeper spiritual lessons. Now, I am not one of those people who thinks of it as we manifest our reality. That's in my humble opinion, there are times for that. There are times when yes, uh, depending on the transits that may be happening in a chart and for some people, depending on their natal charts, they may have that sense of them intimately involved in creating their reality but i actually think that in my humble opinion anyways is that it is the reality that will serve our move towards greater love and greater wisdom that shows itself to us and we create suffering for ourselves we create stress for ourselves when we get caught up in the physical manifestations instead of keeping the focus on the spiritual lesson keeping the focus on how it is that any experience we may be having is part of our unique journey towards the fuller embodiment of love and wisdom more than we have known it before it is the period between eclipses when the veils between the worlds are especially thin that we're able to recognize what spiritual lesson what spiritual reality what spiritual mirror may be playing out in our lives at this time and we get to choose we get to choose to use whatever is taking place to move us towards greater love and greater wisdom towards the embodiment of that and i think that's part of what makes that period between eclipses so magical so we have this portal opening uh, to sheer magic happening now with the solar eclipse set to take place now part of what makes the solar eclipse special is that it will be trine uranus it'll be speaking in supreme harmony with uranus eclipses in and of themselves i think of them as having the flavor of uranus in a way in that they have that element of surprise and quickness that the planet uranus embodies while well, you add the supremely harmonious connection and it amps up the surprise factor it helps us to feel that much more like things are changing very quickly in sometimes surprising ways but in a way that also feels to our advantage but the big news with this eclipse is the fact that it is happening hand in hand with jupiter normally the sun meeting jupiter in the sky well that is said to be the luckiest day of the year this is a solar eclipse meeting jupiter in the sky this is a rare extremely fortunate phenomenon set to take place and i look at this and i feel like for a lot of us out there in our own individual journeys we may find ourselves leaping forward in powerful ways uh, having a sense of our lives changing very quickly very dramatically but in a journey towards greater blessings. And so this can be part of what makes this time especially, uh, especially hopeful for us. This is an energy that I actually did speak about in the Jupiter in Capricorn special horoscope. I sort of combined it with the 2020 special horoscope here on YouTube, and I will link to it in the description below. And of course I did talk about this for every sign in the Jupiter special horoscopes as well. Um, but having said that, what 
makes this powerful for the collective is the sign of Capricorn. The sign of Capricorn is one that is very much about the physical embodiment of life. And it is about embracing our physical reality so that we manifest fully in the physical experience. It is the exaltation, right, of manifestation. And it can be in its own way, hyper earth. It can be hyper focused on the material uh, rather than looking at the layers that underlie our material, whether it's our material successes or our material possessions or our status. It is going to be at this time that all of us in some way are looking for structure. We're wanting to make changes that actually have some sort of a practical application. They're changing our lives in more meaningful ways. It is not enough for most of us at this time to feel different, to feel more hopeful, to feel that things are changing. We want proof. We want to see in very practical ways that yes, things are moving forward. Things are transforming. Things are changing to our advantage. I actually do think that this eclipse in the way in which it is highlighting Jupiterian energy and the time of year it's happening, especially, you know, we talk about this time of year as one of giving, as one of compassion. It is going to be Jupiter now, which will in its own way heighten our awareness of compassion, heighten our awareness of our interconnection. The sign of Capricorn, it can be very individual as well. Yes, it is about tradition and holding tradition, but it's also uh, one that is very much focused on uh, sort of these symbols of success, if you will, right? These individuals who shine very brightly and inspire a lot of people with the material success they've been able to garner. Well, what does it mean beyond someone's personal satisfaction? How is it that that success actually blesses and is part of something uh, more connected to compassion, something that helps the collective? It is Jupiter meeting this eclipse that is going to help us to appreciate that. I also feel like in our own lives and in at least one area of life, we may feel that energy of success as well. But we can maximize the successes we experience now by connecting it to something bigger, uh, something more meaningful, something that does reach beyond just ourselves and speaks to and actually helps others as well. It is when we're able to position what we're doing with some deeper cause or some deeper significance that we actually help ourselves to achieve that much more that we can feel proud of. Make no mistake, this eclipse is a very special time and we don't often see eclipses like this. It is going to be in the new year, right? We're going to have the cap to eclipse season, the other side of the eclipse season. To give you a little bit of a heads up, we're going to have another eclipse, a lunar eclipse in the sign of Cancer across the sky from Capricorn. Now that eclipse has a very different energy to it. Uh, it has a lot of intensity to it. Uh, an awareness of what stays, but more importantly, what goes. Whereas this eclipse now is about fresh starts and fresh beginnings. And it kind of may uh, have us thinking that things will always be amazing, especially with Jupiter and the new areas in which Jupiter is meant to bless your life. Well, we may think that it'll all be wonderful and uphill. And look, in the fullness of time, absolutely it is. We are moving in a direction collectively and individually towards greater love and greater wisdom as part of the mystery. Even when it doesn't look that way, we truly are moving in a direction that is more healed than we have known it before. And I know that that's hard to see when we get caught up in uh, the moments that are right in front of us, the pains that we're experiencing, or perhaps uh, the awareness of the strife and the pain that is in the world. We can lose sight of the bigger picture, which is that more people than ever before are living in times of peace and prosperity. And that is only going to grow. That sense of our awareness of our interconnection is only going to be magnified more and more. We're just in one of the ebbs before we get to that flow where it feels like we really are progressing forward with greater purpose. 
Well, it is going to be now with this eclipse that it may feel like we're very in alignment with that sense of forward movement and forward progress. Now, I also want to add with this, with Jupiter uh, having to do with legal matters, and of course with this eclipse and with Uranus having to do with uh, the future, with eclipses, they eclipse the past, they propel us into the future. Uh, well, chances are we are going to see some important legal decisions playing out at this time that are going to be important in particular internationally important as well. Now let's talk about some of the other things that are happening in the sky this week. Early in the week, we are going to have a beautiful connection between Mars and Pluto. Now this type of conversation is one that astrologers call a sextile, and it's not as supremely harmonious as the trine, right? The trine, uh, like Uranus will be making to this solar eclipse, well, that tends to be really easy energy and energy of blessings. But one thing that can happen with a trine is we just think things can be so good and we don't have to do anything. So uh, the caution with trines is that they can make us lazy. However, with sextiles, that's not an issue because we have a little bit of a sense that we've got to do something to improve our circumstances and through our own action we are able to bring about greater blessings into our lives it's like our action is rewarded and so in a sense with the type of conversation that astrologers call a sextile there's also a lot of empowerment with it as well we're able to own more fully the uh, outcomes that we experience and in that way they give us more control and in that way they can actually be more rewarding. Well, it is now the ancient ruling planet of Scorpio that is in its sign, speaking to the modern ruling planet of Scorpio. Now this is energy of transformation, of deep, meaningful, and profound change, but it's also energy of strategy and of focus. Wherever it is that you are hoping to really hone in, and transform your circumstances to take action towards the change you wish to experience in your life, well, it is gonna be the sky that helps you to do that tremendously. It is gonna be the sky that ultimately becomes part of helping us to understand just how powerful we are, how empowered we can be, and how effective we can be in our own lives and the lives of others as we move forward towards creating meaningful change and changed circumstances. I also really like this energy because it is strategic. It isn't just about taking action. It is about understanding what is wise action. It isn't about necessarily looking at superficial changes. It's about getting to the core, to the center, and considering what actions are actually going to allow things to change for a long time to come and where it is at what deep level it is that we can transform things so they are different perhaps even forever so this on the one hand allows us to hone in on the direction in which we desire to go the outcomes that we desire but also it allows us to be more effective in a larger sense not just in the immediacy but in the bigger picture of our lives wherever it is that you are looking to be more effective you are looking to really hone in to understand more deeply and through your understanding facilitate an alchemical process through a changed perception realizing that what you rejected actually is a great blessing it is in that space that empowerments can be found the empowerment to become a force for good and positive transformation in your life and in others the other energy playing out as we start this week well this is a little bit more interesting than what we've talked about so far because it is venus speaking with Uranus in a conversation of tension. This is the type of conversation that astrologers call a square, and it is one of tension, and it can be a little bit uncomfortable as well. So you can imagine the planet of surprises and of revelation and of rebellion speaking with the goddess of love. How do they connect? Well, it's like with Venus, it's about being laid back, relaxing, knowing that you're worthy, allowing yourself to attract 
what it is that you want in your life. And then here comes an attraction that you did not expect. It was the last thing you were thinking. Uh, feels like it's come out of nowhere and particularly erratic as well. So I would say with this, if it is that you have any kind of important romantic declarations that you want to make, that's wonderful. But if you can help it, try not to do it in the first days of this week, only because there are gonna be romantic surprises for people, but they aren't gonna go as expected and they may not be received well under this energy. This can also be a time when we very quickly become aware of our own desires and have to consider what we're going to do about it. How is it we're gonna channel this beyond just our impulse, beyond just what's shown up? Now, how are we gonna tap into Mars and Pluto so that we choose more consciously? We direct our energy more consciously as well. It's one thing to just kind of sit back and let whatever comes come. That's great, right? There's a time for that. And uh, that can be an interesting way to live one's life. But it is always balanced with this other sacred part of us that we have, which is ultimately to own our power, to propel ourselves forward. So we have that dichotomy playing out at the beginning of the week with Venus and Uranus on one hand and Mars and Pluto on the other. But getting back to Venus and Uranus, okay, with this energy, it is not the time to be making sweeping changes where it comes to the aesthetics in your life, whether it's with you or your environment or otherwise. So what I mean by that is not the time for new hair colors, right? Oh, I like it. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But you know, if you've been watching me for a while, I am not averse to changing up my hair color or something uh, every once in a while. I think it's just hair, right? It's a part of life. It's a part of uh, living and enjoying yourself. So it's all good. But with energy like this, that may not be the route to go. Um, also where it comes to new wardrobes, and especially where it comes to uh, things like cosmetic procedures and tattoos, the results can uh, really go in directions that were not anticipated, or maybe you might even change your mind. Like after the fact, you see the results and you're like, oh, this isn't what I thought it was gonna be. This isn't what I really wanted. And so when I see energy like this, and especially with Uranus, speaking so much to personal awareness, speaking so much to, uh, revelation right it tells me that our energies are best spent contemplating a deeper kind of beauty uh, what it means to own ourselves fully to celebrate ourselves fully as we are and to recognize beauty in ourselves as we are you know that is a supreme act of rebellion um, it is an inner revolution to be willing to accept yourself as you are completely. Now, that doesn't mean you shouldn't do anything that you want to do, <laughs> to uh, look however you want, to express yourself however you want. Uh, I think that's part of the fun of living a life well lived, is to express yourself the way that feels right for you. Uh, but there's a time to play with that expression, and there's a time to contemplate something more deeply, to consider more deeply what it means to express from which place of truth are you going to express from and it is in that space of contemplation uh, that this energy provides us with the gift of truth even if it's a truth that doesn't necessarily feel comfortable how do you really feel about yourself how do you really own who it is that you are how do you really celebrate your beauty do you really accept yourself or not and if you do, why? If you don't, why? There are times for these contemplations that actually can make our expression that much more fun. And so what this energy tells me is go within, connect with that source of true beauty, of more authentic beauty within you. And then whatever changes you wanna make aesthetically, later on in the week or so, at least, whatever changes you want to make, it's just something you're doing for fun. It's something you're doing because you can, not because it's coming from a place of lacking within you. And that knowing that you alone are enough, that you as you are is perfect and beautiful, that is an act of rebellion. That is an act of revolution. 
It is that sense of radical self-acceptance that changes the world. And it is the world that is being changed now right in front of us in so many ways. And the eclipse this week is just one part of it. What I love about this week for us, well, look, it's got to be that eclipse, right? That eclipse is just so powerful, so magical. And to me, this is an incredible way to start ending a decade. It is going to be next week that we're going to step into a brand new decade. I'm really looking forward to that with you. And as you know, and as I've been talking about, and as I recently talked about on my YouTube channel as well, there are really big changes that are in store for us. We are leaving behind one chapter of humanity and moving into a new chapter as well. Well, at least with this eclipse, we are doing so with hope. We are doing so with an elation. We are doing so with an eye on how things can get better in our own individual lives and for the collective as well. And if this eclipse says anything, it says that there is every reason for hope that things can transform, sometimes dramatically transform in a way that you love and in a way that delights you, that feels like a sheer stroke of luck that allows you to fully step into this brand new chapter on the horizon. Well, thank you so much for watching. What do you love about this week? Let me know in the comments below. I love reading you guys. And of course, if you wanna know how all this wonderful stuff this week speaks to you and your sign, log on to NadiaShaw.com. Sign up to be one of my superstars. Superstars get expanded exclusive video scopes each and every week, unlimited access to special horoscopes and more, all of this in the superstar space. I look forward to meeting you there. Of course, superstars get free access to all the special horoscopes I put out. Jupiter special horoscopes are there. You can also download them on my website as well. I have decade ahead horoscopes ready for download on my website and as well, the year ahead horoscopes, that's coming this week, okay? So superstars, keep an eye out uh, for your email notifications. And of course, if you're on my newsletter, you'll get the notification as well to know when 2020 horoscopes, which are almost done, uh, but they uh, will be published this week at NadiaShaw.com. I do have a few exciting announcements. I don't even know where to begin. There's just so much, but first of all, The Body and the Cosmos is now available on Amazon and booksellers everywhere. Thank you to the wonderful, wonderful feedback it's gotten. Thank you for making this a number one new release in the New Age Astrology category. I am forever grateful uh, for you guys, for your love and support and for your, the value that you place on what it is that I have to give. Thank you. Now, if you are one of the people who has gotten a copy of this, please do leave your positive uh, feedback, uh, customer review on Amazon. That really is very helpful. And again, thank you so much for the love that you show my work and how much this has meant to people. You guys have been sharing your stories with me on uh, Instagram and on social media, and I just appreciate it so much. It means so much to me. Thank you. And my next book already, right, is Prayers to the Sky. Now this actually has a brand new cover, the final cover, which I will put up on the screen over here. So Prayers to the Sky to know and to love the astrological planets more deeply. And this is a book where I share uh, some mythology, some personal stories, ultimately to help you to get a feel for each of the planets. We talk a little bit about astrological timing, where it comes to prayers that you may make, uh, where it comes to connecting with a celestial energy, but it is really about forging your own personal connection with the sky, getting to know the astrological planets more deeply. And yes, I did write prayers as well. Um, and so this is like, there's some information here from my astrological magic classes, which were hugely popular, but I wouldn't call this astrological magic. I would uh, say more that this is sort of an independent, perhaps eclectic way to approach forging a relationship with the sky. So I hope that you absolutely love it as well. Advanced sales are on only for like another week or so. Uh, until the end of the month and these books will be shipped out before the end of January. I'm actually going to go home, 
to the cold to Toronto. Uh, I'm going to go home and make sure that I ship them out from there. So Prayers to the Sky is the next book. And again, I hope you absolutely love it. There are uh, gifts that go along with getting the advanced copies. So one is you get a signed copy of the book. Uh, the other is you're going to get an insert and that insert is going to have certain correspondences uh, with it. I'll have a sample up for you guys before the month is over so you can see what I mean. But it basically allows you to consider very quickly what planet we're talking about, what stones, what colors, what herbs, what flowers, and all of that correspond to that planet so that as part of creating an altar and creating a sacred space, which is part of what I include in this book, uh, you're able to understand very quickly by looking at this insert. Uh, you don't have to flip through the book, but it's right there for you. You're able to just look at this and say, okay, I know these are the stones I want. These are the flowers I want and I'm good to go in forging uh, your personal connection to the sky. And the other thing, the really big gift, uh, is a study group that we are going to do this coming year. So starting in February, at every new moon, we will do a half hour study group together. Every study group will have a different planet that we're looking at. There's gonna be 10 in total, 10 planets, so 10 uh, weeks or rather months that we're gonna go through this together. We'll get together, you ask me any questions you have about the particular planet for that month, for that lunation. And then we will together do a little prayer as well. We'll gather together and just talk about the book. And so I'm really excited about that. So if you get the hard copy, uh, you can uh, have as a free gift access to the study group. Now the class pass is actually $60. So uh, if it is that you don't end up getting the advanced signed copy from me, then you can purchase that class pass for $60 and join us together, join us online. So again, I hope you absolutely love this new offering. Thank you so much to all the people who've already purchased it. Uh, it is gonna be, I believe it's January 2nd or 3rd that I have to put the order in with the printer and then you'll get an advanced copy of Prayers to the Sky. This book will be available at booksellers everywhere March 12th. So March 12th is the official launch date. Uh, if you don't get the advanced copy from me, you'll have to wait until we get to March uh, in order to get your hands on it. So thank you. Thank you to everybody who's already purchased the advanced copies. Uh, and thank you to those who are interested and will uh, learn more about it. I'm truly so grateful uh, for the way in which you guys resonate with what it is I have to share. Thank you. Next up is Starstruck. Starstruck is an online global astrology summit. It is being organized and hosted by the world famous Astro Twins. Now the Astro Twins, of course, are living legends in our field of astrology. It was such an honor to be asked to be a part of this online event. And so I recorded uh, my talk, my class with them, and a lot of world-class astrologers have recorded talks as well. If you use my link to sign up, then you get to listen to my talk for free, completely free. And so I would invite you to do that. If it is that you decide to get the bundle where you are not only accessing the talks of all the world famous astrologers who are part of this, uh, including Susan Miller and so many others, um, not only do you get access to the talks, but each of the speakers has included a free gift as well, some gift that they are offering. So you can learn a lot more about that. Uh, please do use the links in the description below. I'll have the link somewhere on the screen as well. And I hope that you absolutely enjoy that. And again, I was just so honored, so grateful to be asked to be a part of this. The Astro Twins are just so brilliant and they are living legends in our field. And so uh, to be part of this event, it did mean so much to me and it does mean so much to me. So you can listen to my conversation um, coming up for free by accessing uh, the links below. Events coming up, I'm going to be in New York City. Thank you so much, New York City. I haven't been there in 20 years. It's gonna be the first time I'm there as an astrologer. And already in less than two weeks, over 60% of all the tickets are sold out. I appreciate you guys so, so very much. I know that there's a lot of love for me in New York City, not only based on the ticket sales, but also uh, when I look at like the, the stats that I get from YouTube, I know that I have a lot of viewers in the 
tri-state area. And so already I feel so welcome. Um, this event is expected to sell out. Thank you again. And it is taking place at the hugely important historical uh, New York Theosophical Society. Uh, so this is, you know, I just feel like I've had all these milestones lately where it comes to my work and my career. And I know that it is because of you guys. So I had the number one book that was really, really huge. Uh, and now to be speaking at the New York Theosophical Society, such a hugely important historical place. The Theosophical Movement actually ushered in what we call the New Age Movement. And it was because of the Theosophical Movement that astrology was able to re-enter uh, the Western world after sort of being rejected with the discovery of Uranus and sort of becoming something that was hidden. And it came back into the West as a spiritual practice uh, thanks to uh, the leaders of the theosophy movement so it means so much to me personally it feels incredibly important and my first time in New York City as an astrologer as well so uh, thank you to all of you who have purchased tickets you can also get my books at a discount in advance so my first book astrology realized and my latest book the body and the cosmos these books are going to be available in advance at a discount. Uh, so normally these books, when I do live events, I sell the books for $20 US. Uh, when I uh, have them online or booksellers, they'll sell them for like $21 or $22. And um, if you buy it in advance, so if you secure the book in advance, it's only $15. And so you get a signed copy of the book as well. The book will be waiting for you uh, at the event. And so, yes, join us. Join us, be around like-minded people in January in New York City. I can't believe that I am embracing the cold like this, but I think it's gonna be a lot of fun for all of us to be together. Um, and again, just thank you. Thank you for welcoming me. Thank you for 60% of tickets selling out in like 10 days from the time that I announced it or something. Uh, and so thank you, just thank you so much. I'm looking forward to being uh, in New York City. Other events coming up in January, I am going to be with the NCGR group in South Florida first in the morning of the 11th. So Saturday, January 11th at 9.30 a.m. There will be a free book launch party. You're welcome to join us. I'll be there taking selfies, signing books for The Body and the Cosmos. This is the official launch party and uh, taking selfies and all of that good stuff. So we're gonna have a lot of fun together. I might give a little speech as well, but really it's to connect with friends and fans uh, and to celebrate this milestone of this book, The Body and the Cosmos, to celebrate it being number one uh, in its category. So that'll be a lot of fun. If you choose, you can stay. At 10.30, I'll be doing a talk called From Earth to Air, uh, and we'll be looking at the energy coming up ahead, not only in 2020, but also beyond. And then in the afternoon, I'll be doing a workshop for past lives in the astrology chart. So we're going to have a lot of fun together. Uh, stay for one part, stay for all of it. You would be very welcome to join me. And thank you to the NCGR Group of South Florida for hosting me. Immediately after the next day, Sunday, the 12th, I jump on a boat and I'm going to be in the middle of the Caribbean Sea uh, with a bunch of like-minded people as part of uh, Love, Joy, Hope, a transformational journey that we are taking together. Uh, and we are going to be under the conjunction of Saturn and Pluto. Uh, I'm bringing a telescope. It's a basic telescope, but we're going to stargaze together and meditate together. And there's all kinds of daily events planned, excursions planned. So if that is something you would like to do, like a last minute, let's do this kind of trip, um, then please, links in the description below. You would be very welcome. Uh, there's about 70 people so far. Uh, just, I think it was about a week or two ago, we had two more signups. So really it is uh, very, very last minute that some people are doing this. But regardless, if you've been signed up for over a year, if you are signing up now, you are very welcome to be part of our group. Make sure you use our travel agent so that you get the best rate, the group discount, uh, so that you get to be a part of all the activities that are planned, uh, that are timed, so that we're all together as much as possible. And I look forward to meeting you on board.
The winter session of Synchronicity University is coming up really fast at the end of January as well. We've got lots of fun classes that we will be doing online. We'll be looking at Venus in the astrology chart. We'll be looking at uh, Pluto in aspect, Jupiter in aspect, um, lunar mansions and chart rulership. So lots of fun things that we will be talking about as we learn astrology together at synchronicityuniversity.com. Again, links in the description below. Thank you so much to all the students who've already signed up. Uh, and I can't wait to learn with you online together. In-person events coming up that I'm really excited about. Things are really starting to fall into place, which is very exciting. Um, the last weekend of March, I will be in Istanbul. The first weekend of April, I will be in Bangkok, Thailand. I love Thailand so much. I've got a surprise announcement coming later this, this week that I will announce where I'm going to be at the beginning of May. So that's really exciting. And I've got three other events in May. In the middle of May, I will be in Toronto. Um, it will be Memorial Day weekend. I will be in Seattle with the NORAC conference. And then the last Tuesday and Saturday of May, I will be in Las Vegas back in Las Vegas. I can't wait to be back with you guys. I love Vegas so much, actually. It really is very incredible. The energy there, the, the rocks, the red rocks, all of it. It's just such a power place. Uh, no wonder it's been hugely important in so many ways. So I'm looking forward to being back with you guys. And then in September, in September, I uh, will be in Colorado as well as part of the ESAR conference. So lots and lots of places we're going to be, new events being added all the time and, uh, and lots of fun to be had. My friend Katie Weber, of course, comes out with her annual success pack that I absolutely love. This is a Feng Shui guide uh, looking at 2020, the year of the rat and how to make the most of it. How to align your home with heaven is what uh, the ancient Chinese esoteric art of Feng Shui is all about. And she really is one of the best at it. And, you know, I always am one of the very first people to get this, uh, this success pack and I do love it very much. So I recommend it to you guys as well. She has helped me so much in so many ways uh, in terms of my work, in terms of my happiness as well. So I'm really very grateful to her. Links are in the description below so that you can learn more about getting a success pack for yourself. Finally, my charity raffle is still going on. All the money collected is going straight to charity and I'm even covering the PayPal fees. I said that before that I would. I didn't realize that in some cases, PayPal fees would be 35%, but that really is okay. I uh, give to this charity anyways. Uh, I'm a monthly donor to them and I uh, really believe in what it is that they do. It is a charity called bestfriends.org and uh, there is a movie, a documentary called Champions that you can see on Netflix uh, that actually talks about the work that they do in uh, rehabilitating um, and rehoming animals who have experienced severe trauma or abuse, whether it's uh, environmental trauma or whether it's abuse. Um, I just found the experience of watching this documentary and learning about the work that they do as deeply transformative. It, it really felt like it changed me in important ways uh, when I learned about their work. And the main thing that it affirmed in me was that no matter what it is that you've gone through in your life, no matter how painful, no matter how dire, you can love again, you can know love again. And that's what their work affirms for me. And so that's why I'm so passionate about this organization. I'm so grateful to all the amazing people who have donated as part of this charity raffle that I am doing. Tickets are just $1, just $1. And uh, with your ticket, you get a chance to win over 50 prizes, lots of world-class astrologers, brilliant people. Some of them you've seen on my channel. Uh, they are donating uh, their services or some people are donating products as part of this charity raffle as well. And uh, you can learn more about that in the links in the description below and you can get your ticket. Now I will add, I'm also gonna be donating 
three starstruck passes. So three passes to starstruck, uh, the conference that I mentioned a little bit earlier, I will be donating that as well um, in this conference. I've got a bunch of prizes I'm donating, including signed copies of The Body and the Cosmos, uh, including Synchronicity University class passes, um, special horoscopes that I'm donating as well. Now I did get a gift uh, from the amazing Donna Woodwell. If you don't know Donna Woodwell, I mean, really, she is just a brilliant and beautiful astrologer. Anyways, she sent me her new book, The Astrology Dictionary. It's such a beautifully done book, and it really is one of those things I wish that I had had when I uh, was a student of astrology. Like, it literally is a dictionary. So when you hear these terms and you go, what does that mean in astrology? You can look it up here. It's really handy, easy to access. Beautiful, beautiful cover, beautifully done. You can see that gold sparkling. So thank you so much to her for that. She happened to send me two copies, so that was exciting. Uh, I know that I'm gonna donate at least one of these to the charity raffle. So someone will win one of these that I'm gonna take home. So basically, I'm gonna put this in my suitcase. I will uh, take it with me to Florida and then on the cruise and then uh, I'll take it with me to New York. And then from New York, when I go to Toronto, um, I will take it with me, I'll have it in my suitcase. And from there, whoever wins, I will ship it out to you uh, by the end of January. So again, this should be on the charity raffle. I don't know if I'll give away both yet or one because it is so beautiful and she did gift it to me and I love her so much for that. Uh, so just thank you. Thank you to her so much for this. And yes, at least one I will be giving away and whoever wins it, I hope you love it. Like I said, there's over 50 prizes. I think at this point, almost 60 prizes. And for just a dollar, you get to be a part of this and you get to donate to a charity that I really love. And uh, you know, I know there are a lot of worthy charities out there. My parents taught me that uh, when I was growing up that 10% of your income should be set aside for charity. And so there are different charities that I do donate to for this particular raffle. I really wanted to put a spotlight on, uh, on bestfriends.org, uh, but I know that there's a lot of worthy charities out there. So if it is that you are donating to any charity right now in this time of giving, uh, thank you. Thank you so much. And if you're giving of your energy, you're giving your positive thoughts, you're giving your love, you're giving your kindness to anybody out there, these are ways of giving as well. Giving doesn't necessarily have to do with money. Uh, our presence is a form of giving as well. And uh, what it is we're willing to share is a way in which we also can be part of putting love and wisdom into the world. So if you are part of putting love and wisdom into the world, I thank you and I'm grateful for you. And thank you, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for being a part of this. I hope that you guys have a wonderful, wonderful holiday season. Uh, I, on a more personal note, I am very inspired by the teachings of Jesus Christ. I have shared before uh, the way that I was raised was to believe that every religion teaches us to be a good person and be a loving person. And I remember my mom saying, if you are a loving person, you are a part of every religion. And I have lived my life in that way. And I have had the great privilege of being exposed to all kinds of ways of understanding and contemplating the energy of love and wisdom, as I like to call it, the energy of the divine, the energy that infuses us, that we embody, that we are here to magnify in this life. And, um, the teachings of Jesus Christ and what it was that we know he taught uh, have been a great inspiration to me as well. And so however symbolic it may be, because a lot of people talk about how, well, actually this Christmas is actually Yule, it's actually the winter solstice, however you understand it. I think that this understanding of unconditional love, you know, this understanding that uh, no one is below anyone else, that uh, we all are welcome with each other and that we all are reflections of each other. I feel like this is something that is so valuable, uh, not only a lesson, but a reminder uh, for us. And especially at this time when people are in much of the world, and I know in not all of the world, but in much of the world, 
uh, people are contemplating and considering this very spirit of unconditional love. I hope that um, you, wherever you are in your life right now, that you are able to connect to that energy, that you allow yourself to connect with the energy of unconditional love, no matter who you are, no matter what you've done, no matter where you've been, you deserve that. And, uh, and thank you. Thank you for showering my life with so much of your love, so much of your trust. You bless me. Thank you. And I feel very, very blessed right now. Okay. Thank you so much for watching. I'm sending you guys big astro hugs. I hope you have an amazing holiday and, uh, and we'll connect soon. So it'll be a great week. Enjoy.